Hey, did you miss the latest episode of The Pulse? Well, no worries. You can watch digital humans expert Mike Seymour and industry leaders from Sony Pictures Imageworks, Skydance Media, Brood, and Three Lateral discuss the recent advancements in real-time digital humans, now on demand via the Unreal Engine YouTube channel. Also now available on YouTube are the incredible presentations from our partners BMW, Pagani, General Motors, and more who shared their stories at Unreal Build Automotive. This week, we welcome creators from around the world to join us for a showcase of the latest developments in HMI and innovations in the automotive industry. If you missed the show or would like to rewatch the presentations, pop over to our YouTube channel. And released during the event, you can now easily build your own digital showroom with our new free automotive configurator sample. Download the scene and go under the hood to explore all the powerful Unreal Engine features used to create photorealistic, interactive experiences for automotive and manufacturing. Are you cruising for good deals? Then race over to the Unreal Engine Marketplace for 50% off automotive-themed products, along with hundreds of other discounted environments, effects, and more. Shop the March sale now through Friday, March 26th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. The power to create belongs to everyone, and Manticore Games is helping make game development accessible to more people with Core, a digital playground and community designed to unleash imagination and explore new play experiences. Learn more about the free gaming platform and Manticore's vision on the Unreal Engine feed. A bold pitch to NASA has resulted in the most immersive space project ever created. For the first time, anyone can board the International Space Station and even walk in space with the help of VR and a breathtaking new exhibit thanks to Montreal-based immersive entertainment studio Felix and Paul. Discover what it took to get this unique project off the ground. Changing any part of a city can quickly result in heated opinions and debate. Learn how a group of students from South Dakota State University used generative game design to bridge the communication gap and bring the community and designers closer to a shared vision. And now over to our top weekly karma earners. Many, many thanks to Grumble Bunny, Every Nun, Clockwork Ocean, Nacho Monkey, Grimya, I Am Ravanan, K Kachis, Kahal18, Jim DeBrower LL and Nasvik. Our first spotlight this week is from 3D artist Z Jian. The atmospheric and thoughtful short film Origin shares the story of a team of astronauts derailed during hyperspace into an unknown starfield. What they uncover on the other side? You'll have to find out for yourself when you watch the full piece on Z Jian's art station. If you're seeking more adventure, check out Heim, a puzzle game taking inspiration from Norse mythology. An unexpected visitor turns Asher's home life upside down. When the time comes, use your wits and acquire magical abilities to regain your home. Learn more and wishlist Heim on Steam. Should you be looking for something to do this week, check out IWOCON, an unconventional convention hosted by the Indie World Order to celebrate and showcase indie games from around the world. The pirate-themed, free-to-play app, built in Unreal Engine, sails from March 26th to April 2nd. Secure your passage to the event today. Thanks for watching this week's news and community spotlight. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore, and celebrate everything Unreal. I'm your host, Victor Broden, and today I would like to welcome back our guest and technical evangelist, Andrea Suka. Hi. Yeah, nice to, nice to be back. You look really a little cool. different today from last time. Why? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, home office and stuff. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So, and, oh shit, I'm naked. Um, is this okay to be naked on stream? On Twitch, um, no, no worries. You right? have a coat, so I, I, have... I, I guess so. Okay. Hello, right. Chad. It's okay. <laughs> okay, hey, so everyone. welcome. So I think this is a perfect opener. We, we decided to do this strange thing, even if it's not absolutely perfect. My, my lips are not completely synced because my iPad right now is not 
are wired up, so it's um, on wireless. Um, but it sets the tone for the stream, right? Because you reached out and said, let's do something chill and fun. Yeah, and uh, yes. And so today we're going to talk about sort of a bunch of different topics that we plan, a couple of projects that you put together as well. Um, we're, among others, going to show off <laughs> how you're currently putting that together. Not going into too much detail. We already actually have a couple of uh, video tutorials and documentation on how you can use LiveLink FaceApp to drive a virtual avatar, which is uh, currently what Andreas is doing. Yeah, um, so the, the, the setup here is I have an iPad uh, with a LiveLink app, and then I have the engine running. And um, actually, the credits go to Christian Andrade, a colleague of mine from South Africa. He did this first. And then I took his project, improved it a bit, and um, gave it to someone else with an epic who is improving it a bit. So we are now three or four people like working on that. So unfortunately, I can only move my head here. I have yeah, a little but if, bit. Yeah. If you were to add a um, like a vibe tracker or something else to your chest, yeah. you could also get um, and drive more of the bones. Yeah. Yeah, what I have here is now um, a leap motion. So what I want to try next is to rig him in a way that I can have a leap motion and then moving his hands with I key moving the body. So like a puppeteer. That's the idea. Okay, so let me switch first back. So that takes some clicks now. I hope this is working. This is as always with this kind of stuff. It's always danger it goes wrong. Uh, okay. So oh, I think it's better. Oh, welcome. There you yeah. are. <laughs> it's... It's still me. It's the same. I just put on some clothes. That's all. It's like a wizard. Quick tricks. Okay. Cool. So let me end the project here. Yeah. So um, today will be maybe different uh, than than the last ones we did here on the stream, um, because we decided to do the animation is better. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so so the idea is we go through different projects, right, and and show a little bit here and there, and 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 talk a little bit more interactive about it. Yeah, and you have a couple. More high of... poly now. I think that's just your stream. That depending on where in the world you are, maybe you have better better resolution now. <laughs> the SSS is weird on his skin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The, the mere, it's actually the meerkat driving a human, uh, yeah, that, a meta, that, meta human rig right now. Yeah. So, so, oh, wait a second. Ah, uh, shit, I've closed the project. Um, I could have shown that. It's, it's kind of funny because I, or maybe I should show it. Give me a second. I will fire it up. Um, it's kind of funny because the setup wasn't really complicated. So, um, and you can see <laughs> that I hijacked the whole scene. So let's take a look behind the curtain. I just, that was not really planned for the stream, but maybe. Yeah, maybe we can, we can just break it down a little bit. Yeah, we can, we can briefly check it out. It's a little bit duct tape. So, but, but basically this is really the Meerkat project as you can download it. And the only thing I did is I, you, you have this here which I have in full screen and then having OBS capturing that and sending that through through Discord. But the funny thing is, this is how it really looks like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I always love that. So it's, 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 so it, okay, I admit it's all fake, okay? I'm not, I'm not in Germany. I'm actually in Serengeti and we're doing the stream from there. So that's it. Yeah, and it's just a picture of my, from my camera, actually pretty old one. So that's, that's, that's one part. It would be fun to see you sort of walk out of your set and into the, <laughs> the natural <Yeah>. environment. <laughs> I mean, that's where a meerkat would have their set, right? Just sort of outside their den. So now, uh, just to be aware, a naked meerkat doesn't really look. <laughs> so, the, so don't, the, mer the, the naked meerkat is here. So, and there's not much that's done. So there's basically some curves. Um, uh, you you adjust in the anim blueprint, and um, then there is um, uh, there is in the anim graph um, you have this modify curve thing, and here's a live link post. So here's the live link coming in, and that one has a retargeting asset, and this retargeting asset is is 
where the most work were. So um, it has different curves to drive the animations, the Meerkat and, and the Live Link. And here you just say, okay, here's the curve coming in and then remapping it to something else on the Meerkat. So that was a little bit um, uh, of the work. And then, then you get the data in and then you can use this with a little bit of math. Uh, here had, here's a head pitch roll with a little bit clamping um, and then you modify the pose of, of, of the head. So that's basically it. Uh, from the concept part of you, but as usual with this kind of stuff, it takes a bit of time to find the right values and tinker with that and stitching it pro. And it can be still done better than than this, but yeah, that's a that's a nice nice thing. Okay, so and and there were a little bit of, it was a little bit off um, uh, because the iPad in wireless here in my environment is not fast enough. Um, if I have it, uh, uh, if I have an using network, um, a Nazel, uh, um, a LAN adapter, then, then it's actually pretty fast and, and in sync. And I mentioned this okay. in chat, but um, the Meerkat, uh, the skeletal mesh was not rigged with facial mocap in mind, right? And no. so you can get a, um, a better result sort of and, and better sync between human lips and uh, whatever you are trying to drive, uh, whether it's a virtual humanoid or, or you know, a animal or something like that, if you actually rig and skin uh, the assets to be used for something like that. So Andreas showed a little bit of the uh, sort of uh, animation loop and retargeting there. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not really done for that. So it's a bit stitched together on the other hand. And, and there's even some stuff that's going wrong, which what you couldn't see, for example, is that his jaw is not really moving correctly. So he actually had really teeth, but the teeth doesn't move correctly. I didn't fix that yet. Um, so yeah, that, there, there, there's different. Um, if, if you really do it for that, that's completely different from, from hijacking a character that's meant for something completely different. But it works surprisingly well, and it's kind of fun. OK. Um, so yeah, we don't have an agenda where we like, like rush through. So as we said before, we, our idea is just to show here and there some little tricks and stuff you can do. And hopefully, this is inspiring or helping with your project. But especially today, feel free to ask anything in chat. So in, 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 in comparison with, with the last streams, we might go a little bit more like we show something, then we talk, then we show something else, and then we talk. And then at the end, we have a little bit of a surprise, of an interactive surprise for everybody uh, to participate in. And then we can do Q&A there um, for bigger things. OK, so we start? Yeah, you got the floor. OK, so first thing I want to talk about is this famous camera shaky thing. So when I was working on this project, uh, which was for a feature talk uh, about Control Rig, um, I made this character in, in Blender and then animated it completely in Engine. And each time um, I looked at it and I walked around with him. I'm not an animator, so my animation is kind of OK-ish, but not really like like perfect and um, dynamic enough. Um, and it felt so, it, it didn't feel heavy. So I, I was trying to get it a little bit more like weight to it. And instead of trying to fix animation, um, I added some camera shake. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing a lot of people do. And I want to show uh, this setup, um, which is extremely simple. Um, because what I basically do is when, when we take a look on the animation, um, let's go to the animation and the walk. Uh, so when you have the animation here and he's walking, uh, what I did is I added some custom notifiers. So you can have notifiers uh, and fire them. There are stuff like uh, play a particle effect or play a sound, um, but you can also have own notifiers, which I added here. So I, um, I have one that's called shake walk. Uh, and then I synced it with a moment he, he is stomping um, on, on the ground. Um, so that's how I can sync the animation with that. And then in the, in the animation blueprint itself, um, in the event graph, uh, you can then look for animation notifiers. Um, uh, and, and then you can find this. And then I have the shake walk, which is just firing. So in this case, I'm grabbing the player camera manager, which uh, manages all the, the camera stuff uh, for us, taking the location of that. And then I'm playing a camera shake. Um, let's take a look at the camera shake, which is an asset. So you can 
go here, right click, and then you can create uh, this asset. Um, and I have I have made two different ones. So I have made one that is uh, when you, when you open up this asset, you have different values you can do. So you have rotational accelera acceleration, you have locational acceleration, like really like moving the camera like that, or like rotational is like um, the three angles of the camera to to accelerate around. And then you have a duration and a blend time in and out. Um, and thumbs, uh, something I figured out when doing this is. Um, in 3D, the rotation works better than the um, than the lateral ones. Um, in 3D, it feels much better if you have that. We can we can take a look. So I I have both. Uh, so right now I have the rotational one. So let's play that again. Uh, it's it's subtitle. So I um, I also encourage people. We, we talk. You see a lot of talks about game juice and stuff, and it's always about camera shakes and a lot of camera shakes. But I've for me, it is more the subtitle stuff. So it is like you can see it more when you look at the borders of the screen that the camera is a little bit shaking. But it's not if it's too much, then then you get uh, really fast um, annoyed by it. Um, so it is um, it is really subtitle. So this one is a rotation, and if I go to the locational one, which is moving the camera, I'm not sure if it's really um, as visible. Um, on a stream than it is when you play play the character here on screen. But now the camera is really going left, right, uh, up and down. Um, and that feels more impact and that also feels very often wrong. And if you get close to something, like if I go here, like then it even gets, now I have collision on for the camera arm, but it very easily you intersect with, um, uh, with the environment. And that's the reason why I personally, in 3D, prefer rotational, while in 2D games, you often prefer lateral uh, movement. So that's one thing. Um, and then let's a little bit go into that. So you have the amplitude, the, uh, the frequency, but what's also interesting is the initial offset. So where does it start? I start at zero, so where the camera is, instead of having a random thing, because if it's random, then it starts somewhere, and that, that already feels, uh, feels off. And... And then for waveforms, you can have a zine wave or Perlin noise, but Perlin noise works quite well for me. Um, and in this case, uh, as you can see, I'm only rotating uh, around the pitch. So I'm only doing this because he's stomping. So it's, it's more like that. So, and, and the yeah. purpose of these camera shakes, it's to sort of enhance the uh, immediate experience of the action that the character is taking, right? Yeah, for me, for me, that was the easiest way to give him a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying, as I said, I'm not an animator, so my animation, instead of tinkering with the animation and try to make him like stomp, it was easier to add this little thing to make him feel like he has some weight. Um, and I think what's important is if you make it for a game, that you, um, uh, that you can make it... Um, Hello, Victor. You're back. <laughs> you're I'm here. The aunt cam now. Okay, cool. That's, that was interesting. Yeah, what Jimmy just... is missing is just saying in Twitch chat is absolutely right. I think if you make a, a game you want to release, you should be having the option to disable that. That makes people sometimes uh, seasick. Um, that's one problem. And there are people who are can can digest that easier than others. Um, and Especially if you're not, I mean, in the best case, you have a slider and you can say how much of that I want. I could I could feed this information in. So you have a fall of inner radius and outer radius. So right now that's a world camera shake. So you have different ways to play a camera shake. So I play a world camera shake at the position of the camera with an inner and outer radius. Um, you can play it somewhere else. That's one thing. Then another way is to start a camera shake and to stop it. So like for an ongoing thing. And here you have even a scale. And this scale, for example, you could feed in, in a variable. And this variable you could put in a menu and, and then you have a slider. So I think it's important to think about for who you do it, not overdoing it. Camera shakes is something that is kind of cool, but on the other side with great, with great um, power comes also great responsibility. So be careful to use this. had a question from, <clears throat> oh, let me see here, I saw it earlier. Um, 
whether or not I think someone was just curious uh, exactly where you put the animation notify. It's in the animation itself, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, he here's my walk animation, which is um, yeah. I made this in engine um, with control rig, but even if it comes from outside, that doesn't matter. You have the notifies. Uh, you have curves you can add. I could have a curve here with values. I could ask. So, for example, the um, uh, a colleague of mine, Mario, did uh, animation with a with a sword of fight, and then he had a curve that was driving a smear effect. Um, so you can use you can use the curves for stuff. The notifies are just telling. It's just like firing in this moment. Um, and, and then you can react on that. You can also react in the, on that in Blueprint. So I made a space game, and there we had each time when you land on a planet, um, they were a little ship detached, and that was in an animation, and it was flying to the, to the, uh, towards the planet. And in the animation itself, uh, the designer could say, in this moment, I want to blend over and load the next level. Um, so that was a notify, and that uh, and that gave the designer full control, but the whole logic is is somewhere else. Um, so yeah, you can have own ones, and you can have uh, you can have particular ones. So I could, for example, pretty easily say here when he's stomping, let's also fire. Um, let's do that just for fun, particle effect. So if I select uh, if I select this now, I can add. Okay, I, I don't have one here right now. Let's see, do we have one in engine? A simple explosion sounds absolutely proper for him. So we do a simple uh, uh, explosion and we can, uh, we could now play it on a socket. I don't have that, so he will play there. But if we now walk around, let's see if this works. Yeah, so he's playing each time with the left leg, he's playing now um, a little explosion. Uh, when walking, so this is how you, how you would, for example, make dust or something when running around. So the the um, the notifies are are, are great, uh, are a great way. So let's get rid of this. Um, uh, to 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 give the designer or the one who's doing the animation a good control over what else is happening. Um, you looking for the questions, right? I also try to look for I, the questions I, a bit. I got, I got you. We're we're, we're uh, putting okay. them all in the dock and keeping an eye on them. Um, let's see specifically, reset. Um, There's the question about the grass. I want to answer that. I I did all the characters and stuff. The scene, my colleague Aaron helped me, and I actually hijacked uh, uh, parts of his project he has shown here in stream uh, about accessibility, which is, in my opinion one of the underrated streams. You really should look at the video for it. Uh, Aaron is talking about all the stuff you're doing about accessibility and what the engine has to offer for that. And he borrowed also the chicken, which is actually the next thing I would wanted to show. That's nice. Ah, I thought it looked like the chicken grass. It is a chicken grass, yes. It is a chicken grass. I'm linking the uh, the video. Yeah, for I have also his, uh, here is his chicken. So, because he allowed me something to do with his chicken, I talked with him this morning and I asked him if I can have his chicken. He said, it's okay. I said, but I want to slice it. So I made this little slicer uh, material. So we can, we can slice the chicken now. So do, did you ever want to know how a chicken looks from inside? It's, it's like this. <laughs> so... Yeah, um, that's actually the next thing I want to show. That's, that's, by the way, for the guys who just joined in or here for some time now, um, this is the way we will do it tonight. We will, or for me tonight, for you. Like, what's the time right now for you? I forgot. It's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. Ah, okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we go through... Uh, <laughs> We go through so weird stuff. So this is actually this effect I made for um, uh, as a printing uh, effect. So I uh, I made a three D printing uh, thing. So I, like we can print three D chickens now. Like so there it is. <laughs> uh, and I want to briefly show it. And as that we will just go through random stuff today and 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 so show this this kind of things. Um, what I want to show here is the power of um, um, of uh, material functions. 
So basically what's happening here is this plane here, so rotation of the plane, so the up vector is my normal, and the position of the plane is giving me control over um, the material uh, and how it's cut. So if I, uh, that's how. Um, so this is basically, we start with a blueprint. So it's a very simple blueprint and I use construction script. So it's, it's working in, uh, in editor. And what it basically does, it takes this position and then writing it to a parameter collection. So let's take a look on a parameter collection. It's basically just a collection of data uh, of vectors and scalar parameters. Um, where you can store data in. And then the beauty of this is you can read it from everywhere. So I can write it from everywhere and I can read it from everywhere. So the blueprint is writing here um, um, two things, the location and um, and the normal. Um, so that's what it's doing here. It's taking the location of the, um, of the actor uh, and then putting it in the parameter location. And then it's using the up vector and putting it in under normal. And this is just for me, I, I enable the slicing so it's not happening like everywhere. Um, so that's basically it. That's how I, I write to that. So let's take a look on the material. Um, so I asked Aaron with this because my <laughs> my character I made here is uh, is not watertight. So if I go inside of him, you can see it's just like um, spheres and stuff stitched together. Um, and that doesn't work so well with, uh, with that one. It's easier if you have one model with one uh, with one material. My my character, that's not the best case you do it, but this has four or five materials. Um, his has only one, so it makes it a bit easier. So if we take a look at the material, um, it is um, uh, it is just a texture here for the base color. Um, let's, let's forget about the rest. It's not even used right now. Um, so that's basically it. There's roughness. Um, and then the only thing I changed um, from Aaron's setup is um, I switched the material um, shading uh, blend mode from opaque to mask to get access to a mask. Uh, and then I'm using, um, and I made it two, two sided. Um, and here is my, um, here's my function. So if we, uh, you can add this functions for, for reuse. And if I open this up, uh, this is the whole magic with the slicing. So let's let's go uh, briefly through it. So I two outputs. One is a massive, and and the other one is a mask. Um, and let's take a look at the mask first. Um, so here comes my data in. So I have the location here, and I have the normal we just saved. Uh, and then as this is a vector uh, four vector, and I need a three vector, I mask it. And then for the location, I subtract it from my a current uh, absolute word position here. I do a dot, dot product between normal and, and that vector. Then I clamp it. And that's basically it. The enable slice is just for me to control if it if I want to have it the slicing on or off. And that spits out the mask. Um, and here comes the two-sided part in. So I can put in an input parameter. In this case, it's an input emissive. Here's a default one. So if I don't put something in, it's an optional. Uh, one, I multiply it by, um, so, so I divide it by half because of the emissive. And then if I'm inside, so I take the two-sided sign, if I'm inside, um, I'm using uh, I'm using this. Um, so basically I'm faking a little bit uh, a plane uh, inside. So if I, if we take a look here, oh, let's move this, it's this easier. So th this is how, how it's basically done. Multiple sliced chicken. And that's uh, what I like is this effect. So the chicken looks completely normal if you look from here. But if you turn around. So I was talking with Aaron this morning uh, to make like chicken McNuggets or something like interior from the other side. Um, it is doable. Uh, it's just like I didn't have the time this morning to finish this. But this is really cool. And this is a kind of um, handy thing. So first of all, it's a nice effect. Yes. But what I like is this kind of method of communicating. So that's what I want to do today, show a little bit how stuff is interconnected, not just showing one big feature or something, more like how can you beautifully use some stuff together. So using the, um, the par parameter connection to st store data and then use it in a function, which you then can use in several uh, materials, is kind of a nice uh, nice thing and maybe that sparks some ideas for your projects. So yeah, 
No chicken, half chicken, full chicken. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, Victor, any questions? Do you want half a chicken? <laughs> Should we share a chicken? I'll take half a chicken. Okay, which part do you want? The whole upper one. part, the lower part, left side or right side? I'll go for the lower part. The lower part, okay. Yeah, lower part. I will send better. that to you. So, um, so this is mine. Wait what, a second. I give you, the, you, you get, <laughs> so you want the lower part. That means like this. Yeah, it's the medius part, right? Looks like okay, there's. Yeah, that's definitely is the best part of the yeah. chicken. <laughs> there was a question from uh, Z Positive who is wondering if it works for a uh, skeletal mesh as well. Uh, which the chicken is actually the chicken is it... a skeletal mesh it doesn't care it's just um it is um uh actually let me try to show something so this one has too many materials but here for example so this is a static mesh uh and we have only one material here so let's open this material Okay, so he, he, here is this material. So what we, to, to do this, so it it doesn't matter if it's a skeletal mesh or whatever, it's, it's, only, it's only important what kind of material it is. So if I now set this one to mask, set it to two-sided uh, and go to my, to my chicken material, where is it? There. Let's grab this and copy this over. And then we just do mask. And we do emissive and I plug this in to have the same color. So let's save and then he compiles and computes the shaders. But now we should be able to see something. Hopefully, here we go. So now I have, uh, I can slice my, and for this one, it's even working better because here, I mean, currently I have also the shadow inside, so you could mask out more. I could, uh, um, I could also use spit out other parameters to make this uh, make this better. But this is yeah, that's working for for all. This is really cool. I, um, I'm not a material guy, just to be sure. I'm not a technical artist. I'm more game designer. So for me, this kind of stuff is. Uh, oh, you see now it's working everywhere where this material is, which, which shows that the material is also used here. Just in another color. <laughs> so this is kind of fun. Yeah, so we're slicing everything now. Hopefully after this uh, after the stream I have some time to clean up my projects after we messed up everything here. Yeah. Any other question regarding that? I don't hear you. Sorry, I, my foot pedal. I was, I was, <laughs> I was muted. Uh, Hoth Hunkman was asking if it's possible to add a like fading effect uh, to the material and how one would potentially uh, go about doing that. Yeah, again, I mean, there I can say I'm not, I'm, I'm not the best person to. I get this basic stuff working, and then I'm <laughs> I'm one of those guys who go back and forth. But what I what I think what you have to do is here right now I'm cutting like hardly, but I think you can do a bias and you can even make a transition, um, and then you have uh, you have a transition instead of having a hard cut. Um, I wouldn't like to try it here on on camera now because that's something I could fiddle. Uh, I have to fiddle also a bit. But what I think what's happening here comes a z zero to one. Um, a clamp value, but I'm pretty sure uh, here you can do kind of a biased thing where you like blend blend over instead of having a hard cut at this position. Lorash was asking, um, could you walk us through briefly on how how you would Im implement something like this in an actual game? Um, would you always have it in your materials or swap materials when the effect is playing, etc.? Okay, I, this pr this comes. From an actual project I'm working on, which is with a, I can say so much, it's about a little robot and uh, you can print new robots. That's where I did it for. And there I don't have a plane. Um, I don't even have the normal because I don't ha I don't need that. I don't need this part. So the only thing I'm having is um, uh, I having actually um, uh, just a, a vector, 
uh, going from it's animated with a timeline going from bottom to top we will show that uh, project soon so but that was for printing like really fast like doing this having some particles around uh, around that uh, so that that's one way you you can do it I mean, there are several use cases. The question is always, what do you manipulate and where does the data come from? And um, currently, I have the data coming from this blueprint, but it could come from, from everywhere. I could even animate that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and if you were looking to sort of slice and be able to interact with the different... Um, sliced pieces, essentially have them simulate, you should look into the procedural mesh component, uh, which Aaron, who made the chicken, also did a live stream on. Um, I'll go ahead and link that. In chat yeah, Aaron well. is doing great stuff. So, Yeah, but uh, I, I used it for kind of a 3D printing effect. You can use it for other cases. It's, it, it's not... I'm showing that not particular because of this uh, really nice effect. I'm, I'm talking more about the basic idea about how can you, like with the anim blueprint before, you can set anims there and then fire it somewhere else and how is this is nicely connected. And here you, have, um, um, here you have the parameter collection and the material function. You can easily, as you just saw, can easily plug in in other things as well. And then depends on your use case where you, who is driving this. Okay. Yeah, it's good. We can uh, continue. Okay. So, so the next thing, first of all, I think I get rid of this, which also means I get rid of everything. That was maybe not. So let's let's get that back. Um, another thing I want to show is something I made with. Um, um, with a character here. Because as you can notice, my character has a face. Um, and he has different eyes. And um, for him, I wanted him to be able to have some kind of facial expression. But again, I'm when you do a project alone, that's kind of a challenging uh, <laughs> to have facial expression on your game. But what I basically did with the eyes, so maybe we go first to the to the material instance, uh, so I can show I can show first the result. Um, I have a parameter here for the mood. So here's different moods. This is normal mood, and this is his, I would say he's a little bit sad. Um, he's suspicious. He's kind of happy. He's even more suspicious. <laughs> He's looking on the ground and he is like, okay, now he's getting crazy. He's like, what? <laughs> um, he doesn't trust you. He gets he, he he begins to get angry and even more angry. And maybe he's drunk, I don't know. <laughs> so this is beyond drunk. Uh, this is timeout. And this is reloading. And then we are at the start. So um, I have this one parameter driving that. Um, and this is also something quite neat. Um, what it basically does uh, is, when we take a look in the material again, um, it is using a flipbook. So here's a flipbook that's telling me the UVs. Um, and I can uh, feed in, which it's normally done for animation in 2D. Uh, but in my case, uh, what I do is the animation phase here is... Um, is a scalar parameter, and then I give the number of rows and columns. So basically, number of rows and columns, when we take a look on the atlas I'm using, so here is the texture I'm using. So it's basically just a 4x4, four four, um, same space uh, texture with all the different moods. Um, and then here in the eyes, I say, okay, rows are 4, columns are 4, uh, and then I multiply it, which is 16. I divide uh, 1 by 16, and then I mi multiply it with the parameter I'm giving in. This gives me the position um, here. I'm using the texture coordinates, and that's the result. And here I'm just blending in a, a color uh, and gives this into the emissive. That's all what's going on here. Um, and in this way, I can now uh, change, change the values here and have him uh, look differently. So that's one part, um, which is already kind of neat. Um, but the next one is uh, you can drive this parameter um, also by animation, or I used it for control rig. So I show one step more. 
Um, so he has this he has this material um, which has this mood value. So let's go to his skeleton. So when we take a look at the skeleton, you can actually add curves here. So I added a curve I called mood. So you can go here, right click and add, add a curve. And then you have two different options. You can say it's a morph target curve or it's a material curve. So for me, it's a material curve. And as it is named mood, it's automatically, um, it is automatically uh, going from, from here through all the materials and settings as values. So this is great because what I now could do is the same like for the animation, what we saw before. I could actually in the walk animation changing his curve. Um, what I did, so let's take a look on his control rig um, because when we come to animation, it's kind of nice. Uh, where do I want to like animation? It's called don't get scared. It looks more complex than it is. Um, there is a, I made a video of it. It just got released like last week or something on the Unreal channel about a uh, control rig and how this is set up. Uh, but I want particularly show this one because I, I, I really like that. And that's, I couldn't show that too deep into the, into the video. But what I have here is when you have the control rig, um, there is, um, there's a curve container. I have it here. Uh, so I can import the curves from the skeletal mesh and hit, that brings in the mood curve I made in the skeleton. So I have that now and now I can set this here uh, with a with a control. So I have this control here. Let's go to the other one. I have two different rigs for him, one for real time and one for animation. And just to um, clarify for those who aren't familiar with control rig and they might I think are. it's blueprints, this is a, a blueprint inspired um, uh, virtual scripting, sort of, it's a version of Blueprint that we use in control rig. So it's a little bit different from Blueprint. So you wouldn't be able to do setting these curve values, et cetera, in a regular Blueprint. You can only do that in control rig. Yeah, I, you can expose them in animation Blueprint and you could uh, you could then from Blueprint itself feed it in. Um, the, the control rig is for, for animation and I use it for three different purposes. Uh, one is you can animate, once you, you made your rig here, you can, whoa, he's happy. Um, you can make your, uh, I can animate an engine. So I can use Sequencer and I made all the animation uh, in, in, in Sequencer. Um, and I use, uh, I use it the second, the second case I actually have here. He is adjusting his uh, foot and hip. So if I go here, you can see he's like he's placing his foot uh, on the ground, um, depending on the slope, and he's also doing some hip adjustments. So he's going down into his knees, which makes it he, he's much more grounded. So that's the second um, uh, the second use case I'm using control rig for, which is he's playing his animation, but after he plays his animation, he's also solving I key and a little bit more elaborated stuff here. So for example. He's also looking at this flower. When he's coming close to the flower, he's looking at this flower. So while walking, so he's rotating his body to that. And if you look closely, he's also changing his eyes. That's what I wanted to show. So he's when he when he sees the flower, he's looking at the eyes, and otherwise he has his big eyes again. Uh, so that's the second use case, like a mix between animation, classical and linear animation, and then procedural stuff on top. And when you take a look at the flower, I use control rig for 100% procedural animation. So for the flower, I didn't do any, um, I didn't do any animation by hand. It's completely in control rig. I'm just feeding in the the position where the character is, and it's trying to aim there with a with a solver. Uh, so that's a skeletal mesh. And then his the head is scaled up a bit, so it looks it looks nice. Um, yeah. So, but for the for the eyes, um, um, when I have access to this curve, I can now um, change uh, it here by by control rig. I also could change it. So this is what what he does here. So he if he's looking at it. So let's unplug that. Uh, if he's looking at the flower. Uh, then he's changing. He's changing his mood. Um, that's basically it. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's a nice thing. So this this curves uh, this curves can be extremely handy, um, and you can uh, again you can you can use them here. So I I haven't I haven't done that, but you, I could now here do a, a curve, and then I could change the values here 
depending i don't know if he when he storms um i could change i could change his value so he's like like squeezing his eyes each time he storms or whatever i won't do it now but that's basically how it, how it goes you could combine it with um your uh, skeleton demo so every time ow ow yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah so that's uh that's that's it for this project. There are several other things I I would love to show, but I um I uh, I actually have prepared one, two, three, four, five, six different yeah, seven different projects. So come on, uh, if, we can do a, a shameless plug. But Andreas frequently streams on Linux content on his own uh, Twitch channel. So go ahead and give him a follow there. Um, oh, at you are too kind. Yeah, but I. I it's it's very often it's in German and very often it's really strange stuff. So it is, um, it's not always work related. Related. Um, okay. So do we have any questions here? Otherwise, I would switch. Not really. To control rig. We can continue on, and then I'll keep gathering all the questions for a more a generic Q and A in the end. Yeah. So let's just hope I didn't destroy my whole project. Yeah, come on, save. <laughs> I didn't make any copy. I did what. I did what we normally, we always tell developers, please, 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 please do version control. It's really important for you. Please go do version control. It's the worst if you don't have your stuff in version control. I don't have this project right now in version control. So yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, now I want to switch to a project I did with a friend on a game jam. And there are several things I like. So it was a it was a 40 hour, 48 hour a game jam project for it was called stay safe uh, jam my my friend i did it together with this dennis we streamed the whole thing we were lazy so we only worked like we are not 100 we worked something like 16 hours on that um so it was more like and some of the stuff here is duct taped um but it's one of the project from last year i'm kind of proud of because it is kind of holistic and has everything um uh, you need so including sound and music and 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 little things. So I first I first show a little bit what it is and then then I show you two three things. So um, it was a, we wanted to do something that's not about COVID. We wanted to stay away as far as far as possible. And and, and the the subject uh, the subject of the um, uh, the subject of the game jam was um, uh, what's called um, what's in English. I forgot what was it in English. It's like solidarity. I think that's the right English term, solidarity. So we were thinking about what is a good, what's a good idea for that, and then we say, okay, holding people on the hands, and that's something you can't do right now. So, so what? That's what we did. So we did this character, you can run around, and then you can just like grab everybody, and then then bring them to safety. So that's that was a basic idea. So we have this this. Uh, these guys, and if you if you get close, they they show a little sign that you can interact with them, and then when you click on them, they have a they have a so and then we needed a little bit of a challenge, uh, so we added we added these cute zombies that are running around, uh, and when the zombies come close to someone, they they bite them, and then they are zombies too. So we have some bugs in it. Uh, one bug I really like is I can go to can go actually go to zombie. Grab his hand and make him human again. <laughs> we never fixed that, but that's kind of that's kind of nice. So um, yeah, so this was a project that was r really fastly done. And he, he, here, are, what I particularly loved is how fast we used um, a particle effect uh, to do something. So let's start there. Um, I have again, I'm more generalist, so I'm not like if it goes really deep in some parts, then I'm completely lost. Um, but I know most parts like like on a, on 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 a fast level. So so let's uh, let's take a look. So if now come really detailed Niagara particles. I cannot answer that. But what I can answer is uh, how we did this hearts because um, it's basically the simple sprite burst uh, template we used, and then we just exchanged the um, the material. So uh, instead of having a round material, I brought in a texture. Uh, which is this, and then then we made a material for that, which is a heart, which is the material is extremely simplistic, so it has an emissive color and an opacity coming from the alpha here, but 
the particle color is um, uh, is uh, coming from from the particle. So that's that's one part uh, we did, and then the rest was just adjusting the stuff. So having the particle burst, and then having uh, ha having uh, the, the the alpha scaled down, and having the color uh, changed, and having the the velocity from point, and uh, that's all. Um, so extremely fastly. I, I think we did this in like five minutes or something like that. And it, I always want to encourage people when they do prototypes, very often prototypes look so simplistic. <laughs> um, and it doesn't convey the feeling you have in the game. And it's actually so easy with the Unreal Engine to just, you have you have a whole suit of, of all those tools. And if you know a little bit of everything, then it's so cool to, to just, bring the stuff together very, very fast. And then we had this kind of, and it was good feedback because in the moment you click it, you get this burst, you, you see something and it's it's immediate. So it's not only for visual, it's also for kind of, it, it, it is feedback for the player. So it adds to the, to the feel. So yeah, the zombie, uh, when, when a zombie, let's see, when a zombie transfers, when a zombie converts, uh, let's see, somewhere here, maybe he, can you can you convert him, please? Um, oh, yeah, closer, 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 closer. Yes. So here again, it's it's also the zombie trans trans transfer effect. It's also the um, omnidirectional burst. It's also from a template, and I just changed the color uh, and made the the clouds go bigger and up instead of down that that's it and it's so easy it's 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 really extremely easy i don't have to know all the details here it can be intimidating first but i start there and then you got interest and say oh can i do this can i do this and then you can go deeper so yeah that's uh by the way we 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 did um so we didn't want to make anything regarding COVID, but what happened is we made a test where we had like spawning a lot of human beings and just one zombie, and then we could see how it spread. So we could actually record a time-lapsed video uh, of a exponential growth. That was kind of, so we tried to stay away from it, but we could actually simulate. <laughs> so we could show that if you stay far away from each other, then the zombies doesn't, doesn't bite you so often. So that's good. Okay, so that, that was one thing. Um, I want to show the next thing is a hand, hand holding. Um, that was where we started. So we said, let's make a game with uh, people holding hands. Let's first test if uh, how, how complicated it can be to make uh, characters uh, holding hands. So let's go to the animation blueprint. Um, and the animation blueprint, the event graph is extremely straightforward. We just get the speed here and I find out if it, if he is a zombie or not. That's all. Um, and then for the animation graph, the animation graph has only a default state machine, which has only an island run. And that's the most complicated part here because we have, we have a different zombie, um, zombie run idle and we have a base character run idle, a blend space. Um, and depending if he's a zombie or not, he's changing this different one. So the skeleton is the same, but we have two different uh, we have two different meshes uh, we we use. So we have the base character and we have a zombie character, which have the same skeleton. So that's one part. Uh, as you can see here, stuff left that we didn't use. So I should dance at the end, <laughs> uh, and we made it, but it was a bug. So I removed it like half an hour before we submitted the project. Um, so that's not in. So, but that's basically it. And for the zombie itself, uh, if he's attacking, he's playing in attack animation. Um, so let's take a look at the handholding. So first of all, the animation blueprint is telling um, um, the, the, the blueprint, the character blueprint is telling this animation blueprint if they hold hands. So if we go to the animation preview editor and I say hold hands, you can already see he is turning. Um, the reason he's turning is um, we used we couldn't make own animation, so we used other animations here. Um, but we needed one when he, they are holding hands. It would feel strange if he's like doing this. So we wanted to to turn his body a bit. Um, so that's what transform modify is doing. So at the moment he's holding hands, um, he is he's turning around, and and then we have a two bone I key for left and right hand. 
So if I take a look here, here is currently the, the position. But um, what what I'm doing here is uh, if he if there is an IK position. So in the moment I, I change this only slightly. You can see here is here is his hand here. Okay, he can if I do it like wait this. No. Yeah, so we can we can wave to the chat. Hello, chat. Um, so if it's not zero, then he's trying to grab that, and that he's doing for the left hand and the right hand. So that's all for the for the animation um, uh, blueprint. So when we take a look at his actually uh, his, his, the the blueprint itself. Um, here on tick, what we do is he's actually knowing if he has someone on the right or if someone on the left. So he, he had two variables. So the player character is telling him, hey, you have this guy on the left and you have this guy on the right. And depending if he has someone there, um, it's taking the hand sockets. So when we take a look on the character again, and let's go to the skeleton. Then I use the hand socket for the left and the right hand. So uh, he, he has the sockets and that's what I'm using uh, as a position. So when he's playing his animation, this is moving with him. So that's how I, I get where it is. Um, and I'm just subtracting them, um, dividing them by two. And then I have a little bit of an offset. So they they reach not like, like on their hips, uh, a little bit higher. Uh, and that's the left position I'm storing. And that's the same I do on the right side. So this is how it's done. So basically it's averaging the bit between them. He's, he's trying, say like trying to grab in the middle uh, between them both, uh, between those both I keys. That also means if I like turn him around really like this, <laughs> yeah, then he's grabbing through his own uh, 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 body. So it's not perfect. And you can also see my character can be the, the, the moving. So he's, he's, um, the reason why he is um, following the player, it's an absolutely simple um, move to AI um, uh, node I'm using here. So there's no behavior tree, there's no complicated math. It's just like he's trying to reach uh, the player's position. And that's the reason why we're, when the player is shortly um, uh, far away, then there is a, um, th th there's a gap, but that's fine. Oh no, I lost him. Yeah, so that's basically that's basically how that works. So yeah, we for the game jam what was interesting is we started with a mannequin and only with grabbing grabbing the hands. And um once we saw that is working, we said, okay, that's our game. So so let's make a game around that. Um Ship it. at the beginning we didn't had any goals, we didn't know what to do. We just said, okay. Holding hands is nice. Let's try that technically, and if it's technically feasible, and then we made the characters, and then we made all the rest. That was a really pleasant experience. You already covered what was most of the questions we received in regards to the uh, hand holding, so you get to continue. Okay. Um, so the last thing I want to show. Um, is again, it's, it's, this time is material. For this kind of game, when walking around here, uh, we didn't want to have a camera um, obscuring and no, no camera. The problem with third person cameras is always super heavy uh, to, to have a proper, uh, you have like, like obstruction and if I collide with it, the camera goes close in. So camera of a third person is kind of an art for itself. Um, and the camera uh, and the um, uh, uh, and, and, um, oh, that's wrong. That's the wrong one. Let's go here. Uh, so the spring arm is already pretty cool and can handle already a lot of stuff, but normally you do stuff in addition. Like when you do the worm camera, you maybe want to change uh, the fall for something like that. So it's, they're, they're, they're pretty good. I recently saw some pretty good GDC talks about camera. Uh, I can highly recommend to, to check this out. If cameras are interesting for you, just. Google for GDC and camera and you'll find a lot of cool stuff. So for us, that was not feasible in 12 hours to do a sophisticated camera, uh, but we wanted to have a, a city where you, you run around. So um, 
uh, we we used assets for that. Uh, so this camera here is only like a cl um, I, I, I clamp it, so I can only go this deep and this high. So that's the only thing I did for the camera itself. And the other thing I did with the camera is depending on how much people I have, the camera is going far, is, is uh, slowly uh, lurping away. So now I have a camera is more far away than if I, so now the camera is going back. Um, so that solved already most of the issues, but one issue kept is, um, is the obstruction here. If you don't do cover clipping, then you have this. Um, so here's something we did for, for material. It's not perfect, um, but basically what it, what it does, it takes the position of the character and the position of the camera and in between it's cutting in. Um, so it, as, as I said, it's not perfect. You can see inside the model and, and stuff, but for us, that was, that was the fastest way to, to get this done. I can briefly show this uh, material. Uh, when I find it fast enough. So, yeah, here is, uh, is a material function for the opacity. So it's a little bit similar to the chicken before. So this is a, a mask material. And then I have a function here. And then this function, there's the mask for it. Um, so the character is writing again in a, a parameter collection his location. So this is how this shader knows where the character is without like casting and doing really crazy stuff to get the information in. Um, the character is just every tick writing where he is. So I have that. And then it's masked out and then it gets a di distance to the camera and the absolute world position, subtracting some stuff. And then uh, having um, at the end a sphere mask um, driven... Uh, with this data and a radius. And that's basically all it is to that. Um, and transforming here also the vector from world space to view space to use this. So, so but basically it's the sphere mask um, that is uh, that is giving that. Um, and that was the easiest, most straightforward uh, way in, in our case. I think it doesn't hold up for a complete game, but it's, at least it is a start and you can go from there and you could... could could do other stuff with with it. So he has other he has other situations where, like if I'm going like half in, then you have something like this. So yeah, it, it's not completely holding up. But again, a good example about um, thinking how to use uh, where do you get the data from? Where what do you want to manipulate, um, and how you want to get it in? And yes, you can play it. Uh, fortunately, it's an itch IO. We we pushed this out. Um, yeah, I th I think it's called. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Can I? We had this yesterday on a huh com conversation as well. Um, we were playing some games, and someone's like, "Yeah, the first game I made." And then I don't. He he didn't remember what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot. It's not called shooter game. I can tell you that. Um, fifty. Game camera mistakes, that is a talk. That's one of the talks. There are two or three good talks, but that one is really good. Um, Bob's not your uncle was wondering, how do you manage the color changes of the people as they get attached? Oh, that's um, that's absolutely random. I can, uh, wait a second. We can here make human uh, pick up. Here is a pick up function. So he's getting pick up. Let me see how I do it. I've it, it's long time ago. How do we color him? Oh, there it is. Good. Have so you seen it? Yeah, the vector parameter. The vector parameter. <laughs> that vector. sounds right. That's enough. It was in uh, the here. It is here. It is. So unfollow camera. I have a material. It's a dynamic uh, material with a color parameter, and it's 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 not. That's the reason why they all look so, um, what's the right, pastel? Yeah. Uh, they're all a little bit pastel. The reason is it's just a random for RGB between 0 0.2 and 1. So absolutely random numbers <laughs> for, for green, it's 0 to 0 0.7. And then um, B is 0 0.2 to 1. So um, extremely 
extremely simple. Normally, I would maybe make a list of colors in an array and then pick from there to have a little bit more control over it. But we like we liked it. It fit to the style, so we have the Fresnel uh, around the character, and then with this with this colors, we were actually pretty happy, so we stayed with that. Uh, follow me, stay safe, Jam. Yeah, that's that's the right link. And uh, and Deke is uh, he, <laughs> Dennis will be happy now <laughs> that you that you download and check it out. So it's uh, it's it's a complete game. It has music and uh, and stuff. So yeah, it was one of the of the fun things last year. Uh, I must admit, I really enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that's st the stuff I wanted to show here. Awesome. We can continue. Or you can continue. I'm just sitting here telling you what to do. You, you, you just but jump in if you want to add something. Feel free. So, chat. What's the next one? Do we want to do look at drag and drop, or do we want to take a look on a dungeon crawler? I I call it ear of the beer holder. Ear, as in e ear. Yeah, like eye of the beer holder was already taken, so I. Uh, beholder. Okay, I'm. I thought you said. Yeah, my my German accent. I'm I, sorry. I, know, I thought it was beer holder, which. <laughs> yeah, it's a beer holder. A beer. Beer. Like a beer. Like a beer. <laughs> I was trying. That's to... the name of. The, that's how I named the project. So yeah, we can do that, uh, or we can take a look at strange gummy bears. That's. Uh... So we can either do physical assets, uh, gummy bears, uh, or we take a look at the dungeon crawler. So what does the chat say? Total Commander still alive. Yes, I even it says not registered. I know that's wrong. I have actually a version. I, I... I think they just want us to make ear of the beer holder. That's yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> not today. We do, we do both anyhow. It's uh, let's let's start here. So that's the project. Um, here I want to show um, an editor widget. Um, So like. what I have here is a tile map. That's so how it looks looks like that. Um, and and the cool thing here is uh, this tile map uh, can generate uh, this, this this tile map. It, it's a blueprint that generates this kind of grid. I did a little bit of C plus plus to load uh, CSVs in and interpreting them. So I have as uh, the CSVs are um, just like zeros and ones or a five for for a gate. Uh, to, to load that in and then I can when I start this like in this really old dungeon crawlers I can move from crit point to crit point <coughs> oh, I forgot that the sound is on <laughs> yeah okay let's stop this here for a second so um, what it basically does uh, is uh, uh, I have the tiles the tiles know their neighbors um, so that's a, a crit based system um, and I have uh, so, so every like every neighbor I'm using data assets um, to identify the neighbors. So I can always ask for up, and that gives me then um, the ID of the grid point. Um, and I to edit this, this was kind of a pain. So I could say here I want a floor, and then set next tile. So that's how I could carve this out. And that was that uh, was too complicated for me. So. I used um, the editor utility widgets. So let's let's run this. So I call this level design tool, um, and I can now click the stuff, and then then it does all, everything under the hut what I would normally do in the details. So I can like carve this out, make some space here, um, and if I have carved it out, I could also say like, okay, let's let's do some more here. And then I can select it, and it's identifying. Oh, this is a tile, or this is kind of a grid. So then it goes to floor. Or if I select here, I can say like, let's have a door. Here. Let's have a gate here, and then I can click the gate, and I can also say let's set the state to open. So with this, uh, with this little thing, I can work like much, much, much faster. So and now, when I walk around here, let's open the gate. Um, here's my. Oh shit, I forgot him. Okay. Yeah, so here's a 
He has a skeleton coming. Forget about him. Um, yeah, so I, I, I briefly want I, I briefly want to show this uh, because this uh, um, I think it's one of the underrated features of the engine. Um, you can make your life so much easier um, by, uh, by 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 using this. So I I want to show that. So if I go to edit here. So that's the widget plutility widget, uh, 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 editor, um, an editor uh, blueprint widget. So I can, that's like the normal widget editor I'm using. UMG one I'm using for my in-game um, stuff as well. So I made this this little setup, put some buttons in here, and I have a, I have a switcher. Um, I have a, a, a switcher here, and can uh, and I have different. Um, uh, layout. So here's for the door, or here's for setting the floor, or here's for the gate. So that are sorted by by index. Um, and then the logic for us is, is 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 not very. It, it's it's a little bit spaghetti um, because I went with the flow here. Um, but basically, it's checking what is selected, and if it's a tile, then it's setting the coordinates and is um, uh, switching to the right uh, widget state. Um, color when, when it's a gate and it's making these colors here and then I have the buttons and, and the buttons um, for example for here's the stuff for placing a gate and then there should be for um, for toggling the floor um, the floor styles so it's taking the tile he, he knows which tile is selected and when I'm selecting I'm, 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 I'm taking this tile the tile has all the information I have the tile ta ta tile type sorry um, and depending if it's a grid point or a floor, I'm I'm switching between them, and then the logic is in the tile. So that is uh, when I go here, uh, here's all the stuff like registering, spawning a new uh, spawning a new tile, which in my case is with walls or without walls. The walls know their neighbors, so they put pillars or not. I don't want to go too deep here. Um, uh, so this is a whole normal logic I'm using in many many other places. So this is very lightweight. There, there's not much to it, um, and it took only a few. I think it took an hour or something to to make this little this little tool. And instead of now, like go, I could change it here. I could go here and then say, okay, I want a floor here, and then I set tile, which does basically the same like the tool, but it's much more convenient to just go here now and like carve my way in. Select something, saying I want a door. Uh, selecting the door and set it to open. So that's it. So I, 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 yeah. Ah, uh, please go ahead. No, 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 go. Oh, I, I can interrupt you later. No, you first. <laughs> All right, fine then. <laughs> Some folks in chat might be wondering how you exposed a button in the details panel for the actor uh, that initiates the event. Which is this, uh, is open, for example. Um, I meant the one the set tile that you actually have exposed in the details panel for the app. Ah, okay, that's that's easy. When we go to the tile and we say the set tile, how do you expose it? It's just call an editor. So if you select the function, you can say uh, call an editor, and then it's available to you uh, in, in, in the editor in the details here. So if I select now a tile, I have the set new tile button, which is really cool. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's it. I, I just want really to highlight this uh, this utility stuff. I think it should be used much more. You can make you you can make your life so much easier with that. Um, yeah. So it's not only always about making the game, but also making making it in a way that it is fun for you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to touch the C++ part here, but I'm not a C++ programmer. I come from Lua. That's my my language I learned years ago when I started 20 years ago making games. So I'm still like scripting and stuff. Um, so I'm not not really deep into C++, but deep enough to to um, to make a blueprint library here. So I, I basically uh, let's see um, if I go. Uh, let's go to the. I can only. I can show a brief look, but it's also a little bit time ago that I made this. So, so here's my tile map. So here's all my logic about spawning all the tiles. So, uh, resetting the map, um, updating tiles in map, get index from coordinate, get coordinates in range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's all my help helper functions to do everything with a grid. Um, 
so so this actor is asked when I move forward, can I move forward? Is there so they I, I don't have physics or something. So when I move around here and press forward, um the character controller is asking the map, can I move in this direction? And if I <laughs> this is a skeleton, I'm really sorry. Um We we turned down the audio for it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh you did? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so it's only half the fun for the chat. Um, uh, yeah, so so this is all uh, all handled here, um, and I have one button that's called generate map from array, um, and here I can specify a map file which is a CSV, uh, and if I go here to the generate map from array, what it basically does is load file from string, and that is the blueprint library uh, function I uh, I wrote in C plus plus. I was super straightforward. You can even stitch it together by just finding stuff on the internet. Stack Overflow it together, and then then it, then it kind of uh, works. But I, I I give an extremely brief look here. Um, if it loads up fast enough, I haven't tested this, so that wasn't really planned. But maybe people want to see it. So it's uh, the C plus plus file. Here's a function. So I use a macro for that. Uh, I take the project contrary directory. Um, and then I'm I'm loading loading the string in. So what I basically get is um, uh, here in C plus plus I get a string. And he this this math for example I should move to C plus plus. So he's now taking a look. Uh, he, he's breaking it down. Um, so I get zeros and ones for filling out a tile or not. Um, Again, I don't want to go too deep here, also because I might not remember all of it. It's a bit uh, time ago. But at the end, it's spawning a grid point or a floor, depending on that, and it's spawning um, it's spawning gates. And again, this place gate on tile in direction is a function that the plutility, the, the widget utility, editor widget utility is always... I still love the name plutility, Victor. Can't we still use it? Well, it's it's different. You know, it's important to name things. Yeah, with I know. Different names if they are different things. Yes, I know. Okay, uh, <laughs> so uh, play. So this is the same functions uh, I'm using here, or I'm using um, uh, with my with my little widget. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Um, let's see. I think we had one question here. If I can get to the right doc. Um, Josu asked, "Can we look at how you formatted the CSV file?" Yes. Sure. Um, yes, yes, yes. So content files. So the one we currently loaded in. Let's open. Now you have to see my. So this is how it looks like. So here you can see. Free, 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 free. So the, the ones are the <laughs> are the positions where a tile is. The twos are where I think the gate is north. <laughs> a three is when the gate is on the right side. A five is where the gate is on the left side. I forgot, but something like that. I think that answers. Yeah. And I used the spreadsheet. Actually, I edited my first maps in spreadsheet. And and the idea, the cool thing is, I I can I can let's see if this is still. Let me see if this is still working. Maybe it's still working. I can I can change it in runtime. Um, oh, that's a torch. Um, can I still change it in runtime? Well, you're figuring that out. I'm going to answer a question from. Yeah. I hate this, who asked, is there a way to spawn an actor only on ed only in editor, such as a visual helper and not on runtime? Um, you can set actors and actor and components to be editor only. Um, I believe the spawn actor function would still run on runtime if you have it hooked up to uh, begin play or in construction script, but the actor itself would not exist uh, in the package version of the game if you use um, editor only. It's a checkbox in the uh, details for actor as well as the components. 
Okay, so when I walk around here, I can actually press H and then he's loading a new map in. Unfortunately, this character is still there. <laughs> Should have removed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Joel is saying that you can, you can mute editor sounds. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But it's a cool sound, right? Yeah, I can... Um, the wall by... <laughs> I got a little bit crazy, so the... Oh, come on, stop it. Uh, when we take a look at a wall... Um, a wall... So this is a tile. That's how a tile normally looks like. Tile also has a, um, has a roof, but the roof is... I have it off here as a roof, but I switch it as a visibility off in editor and it's only visible in in game so I can look inside of them. But the wall cons the, the tile consists of walls and the walls consist of, you really have to appreciate this Victor now because I put, it took much too much time in this. The wall actually consists of bricks <laughs> and the bricks are randomly <laughs> generated. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. So the draw call uh, for your uh... <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all one material, and it's all it's it's fine. But it's a bit crazy. So the whole dungeon, all bricks in the dungeon are actually generated procedurally. Don't do that at home, kids. This is not that's not the best way to do it. But the cool thing is now, all, even if I have only I have only actually two or three bricks. So I have this brick, I have this brick, and I have this brick, and they are randomly rotated. So they are rotated and differently placed, so it looks different. Okay. Yeah, fine. Cool. Any question left here? Not in regards to the dungeon crawler, no. Um, I know Bob's not your uncle asked a question about the audio, but we're actually going to cover that as well. Yeah, the audio is the next thing. It's in the same project. So this is one of the projects I made on stream. And then someone on stream asked, when we made this character walking here, so I I'm, I voxeled this character in, in uh, Magicka voxel. Um, and then I got some animations in. And then when the chat saw him walking, I said, it looks like he's walking over Lego. Can you make Lego? So yeah, I... Um, uh, I just used the cube, scaled it up, uh, did random colors, and used the foliage tool to scatter Lego around, and did the most hurtful thing you can have in life, which is uh, a skeleton walking, uh, walking over Lego. And I want to show you how the uh, how the audio is. And the audio is made in a similar way like what we have seen with the camera shake before. So when we take a look at the walk animation for his for him. Maybe at this point we really should go and uh I always forget where it is. I've actually never tried to uh globally mute the editor before. Uh I it isn't the it's in the project or it's in the editor settings. I always forget. I would Think editor. Yeah, editor is more likely. So here it is: enable editor sounds and allow audio playback. And and so, but I keep it running, right? We need it. <laughs> um. So here, when he's placing his food, I'm just playing a sound. That's it. So it's a, it's it's just a simple notify for sound. <laughs> Um, so you add a uh, play sound here, and then I um, I add a cue in the sound cue. Um, the sound cue is just random taking some of them. So and these are actually recordings from a <laughs> that's recordings from a German bigger streamer, um, and I recorded him on a conference uh, where I made a small game, and that's why so. So I misuse them here. I didn't even ask if it's okay to play them. So I think, yeah, it will be fine. It will be fine. Yeah, that's uh, that, that bad. I thought it was you doing Anamanapea, actually. Nah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, and I mean, you, you, you can go further here. You can have a, a mo modulator, for example, to have more variation to say, okay, pitch up and down and volume. And we can like, we can go crazy. That's right. That sounds much better. Let's, let's try this. Perfect. I think we improved it today in stream. <laughs> yeah. Let me try something else. What if, if we put it really low? Victor, what's happening now? Um, I actually don't have monitoring of your... Oh, oh you have... don't hear it. Oh, no, no, I oh, don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so now we made a cow walking over Lego. Yeah, nice. So that's how you do funny games. And that from a German. Okay, let's let's move on. <laughs> All right. Next. <laughs> next. So chat, you're still there? All fine? Yeah, they're there. Okay. Ship it, yeah. We ship it. I think we should sometimes just release stuff earlier. I mean, we general as game developers. Um, uh, I don't remember so what... much. I have so much random stuff on my hard drive. When we when we talked about doing the stream, I was wondering what what to pick, and then I was going through all my old projects and was like, oh shit, this was fun, and this was fun, and this was fun. And you should. And instead of like having it decaying on my hard drive, sometimes it, sometimes even that should be released. That's why I try to save whenever I package, whether it's for testing or um, to send it to someone else to test. I try to upload them occasionally on onto uh, onto a cloud server just to keep them for posterity's sake, because you never know yeah. uh, when you might want to be. You know what? Like I I made that once and. And it's so nice and easy if you have a binary that you can just, um, you know, you can just run it. You don't need to make sure you have the right editor version and the plugins and everything else. You can just go ahead and play the package version of it and sort of like, this is what we did. And, oh, it feels this way. And like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. Work off yeah, that. Yeah, I have a I have a plugin now with some stuff like a main menu and in-game pause menu and stuff. So, and and was like, I'm using this uh, this material so you see in many of my prototypes, you see this material. It's a world-aligned material uh, with a grid. I can easily adjust so I can get a feeling for height and, and, and stuff. So that's that's something. And I have a plugin by now with like a basic, like when I start a new kind of prototype, I have already everything in I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, regularly. So um, yeah, for this one, um, uh, Physic acid is something funny, and I'm currently working with a physic acid for another project. And then I was wondering what to do it with for for the stream, and I wanted to do something chill and fun. And uh, I came up with the gummy bears. So um, here's a gummy bear. It looks nice. We will take a look how it's done. Um, so when I play, it's like here he is, and uh, when I hit him, he's falling to the side. So it's a really jello gummy bear, which is nice. Um, even better is uh, uh, even better is uh, not to have one gummy bear. Andreas, can you uh, disable your stream overlay? My For stream overlay? Channel? Yeah, it took me a while to realize that. Uh, but Loresh asked, well, what's the act bar? Because we can see uh, when someone falls on your channel that you're hosting us from. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's the one time you get to say that word. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm double sorry now. Double. I, I, that's yeah. something we didn't we didn't test before. Okay, so back to our gummy bear. That's more interesting. Um, so here we go. Uh, we need definitely a cannon with uh, with.
with gummy bears. So I find it pretty satisfying to see them hit midair. So I could watch this quite long. I think it only happened once, right? No, but it happens. It's random. So the oh. the velocity, the force I get is complete. There, oh, yeah. nice. It's kind of nice, right? Yeah. It's. It, I don't know why, but I I made it, and then it was kind of satisfying to to watch, and it it's holding up pretty well. Um, I think that's the most expensive material I ever made, um, and this gummy bear is a skeletal mesh. With physic, uh, with a physic acid, uh, and I think it has sixteen bones or so. Um, so it is bodies as well. Hmm? Sorry. The, do they have sixteen bodies as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have sixteen bodies. So it is, uh, it is, it is, it is, it is bad. <laughs> it is really, and you you see a little bit with. I I take the most expensive translucent material, so you have a little bit of flickering um, sorting issues, which is normally because in the way I did it. So it's not that's not the way you normally should should do it. But I was just going for the joke. So it is, and I had at the end five hundred gummy bears on the scene, and it was still holding up pretty well. So um, we can even go on top of it. Yeah, one would suspect that they would sort of, you know, freak out a little bit and. Uh, yeah, no, but... that's. Uh, I, I took a little bit of time. To, yeah, wow, gummy bears. Um, I took a little bit of time to make the setup for the physic acid right, um, and uh, have the right weights uh, for the for the acids and. So the camera is getting a little bit crazy because the capsule here has uh, moved around a bit. So um, no, they are not instanced. Um, but but I want to I I want to show uh, show it. Let's uh, do I have? Okay, let's let's take a look at the gummy bear itself. So I made this gummy bear in Blender, and when we take a look at um, when when we take a look at him here, um, his his skeleton, uh, he has this kind of spine. <laughs> it's hard to say for him. Um, and then, then he has left and right. He has some uh, some some bones here. I can I can move around, um, and they have uh, they have uh, more or less influence um, on uh, uh, done with the skinning. So yeah, here here it is. So that's the basic setup. Um, and then I made the physic acid. So the physic acid I made in a way that I. Um, let's have all bones. I selected the bones I want to have it for. So normally, when you create, um, when you create it, there is this tool, and it's automatically creating um, uh, capsules for bones with a minimum size of twenty for you. Um, that already helps. Um, what I did in my case, I selected all the bones I wanted to have a, a body for, and then I generate generated the bodies. Uh, the next thing I did is um, for the bodies itself, for the different physics bodies, I moved them in place. And when you go down here in the capsules, I I set the rotation and the radius and length uh, by hand for the for one side and like nulled them out so they are aligned to the bones uh, very well. Scaled them down. Um, I replaced um, I placed the lower one with a box. So that's the reason why it's standing still up. And that's the heaviest one. So next, what I did is, um, depending how deep they are in the chain, I I changed the mass. So this is uh, has the highest mass, and then um, the next spine point has less, and that has less, and that has less. That was helpful. Next thing I did is uh, linear damping. I set to one and angular damping to thirty, just to get the dimension right. So that's how how fluffy or not fluffy he's, he's how fast he is moving. Um, and here's another thing I did, what I wouldn't recommend for a game you want to release. I increased the solver iteration. That's the reason why it's a little bit more stable, but it gets more costly CPU-wise. Um, so you have to be careful with this. So I, I, I punched it up to, uh, it's eight and one, eight for, for, uh, for, for position and uh, one for velocity uh, iterations. So this is costly, but, but in my case, it was okay. I just, um, uh, I, I just wanted to get crazy. Uh, at least once. Um, so that's what I did for the for, for the bodies. 
Um, and then when we take a look at the constraints, uh, so the constraints are all limited in linear, so they can only move a little, like three units left, right, up, down. Um, and the Angular, um, I also, all of them have the same setting, so I, I modified them at once. They have only, they can swing a bit, they can twist a bit, they can twist a little bit less than they can swing. And then the jelliness or how stiff he is behaving comes with the motors. So I have a, uh, I, I have a linear motor here and I have an angular motor here with a strength of 500 for all of them. Uh, and when I, and then I tested long enough here. Uh, that's something I really love with our physics editor. You can, um, you can test here without going back and forth between the game and try to make it run. So in, he, he, here, I first try as long as I can here until it, 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 it just feels right. Um, and it's so much, it's so much fun. I actually, my daughter brought me some gummy bears at the evening because she saw me here and said, I deserve gummy bears now. So you get, you get a hunger for it when you play with this a bit. So yeah, you, you, you can test it here to, to get a good, good feeling for it. Um, and it's a control click and drag, right? Uh, right. So if I play, uh, uh, if I make right click and then I hold control, I can grab the bodies here. Um, so, and this is how you can, you can test how, how it, how it feels. You can, uh, in physics here, you can adjust, uh, also how much poke you do and how much draw you do. You can change the gravity, um, etc. So it gives you a pretty good control over what, what you want to test here. Here's, here's one little thing I, I, I figured out, um, or like, like Jeremiah from Control Rig uh, told me, um, very often when you work with this, you want to see the bones and then you don't want to see the bones. You can actually, um, here where you go to show and like, for example, go to the character and then the bones. If you hold shift click uh, on one of those, like then it's popping up um, the options here. So now I can can switch between those without going always here down here and waiting for that to pop up. So I can customize a little bit my uh, my interface here, which is extremely helpful for this one. Um, or another one that's really good are the shortcuts here for select all bodies, select all simulated bodies, select all uh, kinematic bodies, select all constraints. Um, this is how I did this just within one hour. Um, I think it didn't take more than one hour because I... Um, I first did the big parts and then, then I did the, the, the smaller parts. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's for the physics asset. And then let's take a brief look on this extremely expensive material. Um, so the material of the gummy bear is, um, is translucent, which is, which is already by itself a little bit more expensive, but it's subsurface. Um, and the translucently is a translucent volume. So this is one of the most expensive material you can make. Um, but it gives me the option for roughness, um, which was nice, for the opacity, for the subsurface. And then I use the Fresnel um, to lerp between uh, two values here to do the refraction, which is kind of nice because uh, when you go close to it, it really looks like a, like, like a gummy bear, the refraction. Uh, you get uh, is is really nice and subtle, so I, I really like that. Um, but yeah, if I would do it for a game, I would maybe look for cheaper options. And I get, get I can also get get closer when I uh, when I tinker a little bit more with it and and finding more opt, uh, uh, optimal ways to do it. Yeah, but that's uh, that's it. So the physics editor is great, and you can do really fun stuff with that. Let's see. Um, Mustafa Berke was asking, "What's the difference between this and anim anim dynamics?" Um, I think the, the anim dynamics you're talking about the uh, anim blueprint, um, uh, the, the anim blueprint nodes, right? Yeah, the uh, I'm honestly not sure if it's the what we refer to as an animation blueprint post process or. Yeah, let's let's. Yeah, I think the anim uh, dynamics node, right? That's in the anim blueprint. Yeah. So if we would make an anim here, we're talking about the rigid body nodes, right? Those ones. Um, th this gives you more control what you want to uh, simulate. So right now, this one, if I take a look on the on the bodies, if I, let's take one body. 
um, they are all set to completely simulate all the time. So I have no logic, I have no animation, I have, I have nothing. I'm just throwing that in, saying you are a physic body and do fully, fully, uh, um, uh, uh, full simulation. Um, you want to go here when you do something like hair, you have your animation and then you have a physic asset for the hair. Uh, and you make your physics asset for that, and then you enable that for a hair strand or whatever. Uh, after, for example, you did all your um, solving all your animations, and you have your final pose here, and then then you do that. Um, so there's different ways. You could also um, uh, you, you I could also in Blueprint like dynamically. That's what the ragdoll stuff is doing. So I have the normal animation running, and then I enable simulation on the full body, and he's falling apart and doing whatever. And then I need to do logic to recover him. Someone was wondering if um, you'd be able to share the gummy bear, the gummy bear project, I guess. <laughs> I haven't thought about that. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing um, secret, there's no, copyright stuff in it i did all by myself i yeah i don't know where do we share this kind of stuff i have um, no idea them on the asset sharing section of the forums um, okay and then the link will uh will also uh, paste the link inside the forum announcement post so i i, I could do it if people think this is helpful as said you have to take this a little bit with a caveat this is this is this is not how you would do it in, in a proper project. It's more like a crazy, funny thing to test a little bit how far you can go with physic assets and have the soft body kind of feeling. Yeah, we'll, we can dive into that after the stream. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, did you have, I think there's another one. Yeah, I have, I have one. I have one left. I can show. I have one left. The meat cube is really funny. Mr. Tapa just said it. I need this project to recreate the meat cube. I wasn't aware. I totally forgot about that. It's it's really long. So if people don't know what we are talking about, we're talking about Tim Sweeney presenting Unreal Engine three, and there was a meatball a meat cube, um, a soft body kind of thing. And I realized after I made the gummy bear that this is could be really fun, but I couldn't today make it anymore to find a meat um, uh, a material. Otherwise, you would have seen <laughs> gummy bear with meat material. Would have been nice. But yeah. I don't know if people remember that. That's really a long time ago. Clearly, some people do. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, I, um, I found the video yesterday of the presentation. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is uh, is is uh, about uh, virtual textures. Um, so here I have a project we have already seen on the stream, which is my uh, my pirates project. But now. Um, what I'm really happy about is, first of all, I have the new volumetric clouds and the um, and the new sky in, and I have the water in since this morning. So this is uh, the water from 4.26 um, with my uh, procedurally generated, what means procedurally generated, but random generated um, island here. Um, but the main thing I want to show is my textures for this are not the most beautiful ones, I would say. So if we if I first go here and get rid of the grass, you can see what I'm talking about. So let's not have grass for a second. So this is how the texture looks like uh, in flat. So it's a stylized texture. I forgot where I have it from. I, I'm pretty sure I have it from some kind of asset pack. Um, and one really neat thing with the virtual textures is um, I have, um, I'm using the virtual texture, writing that uh, color into a texture, and then I'm using it to coloring the grass. Um, 
So let's see how, how this is done. And the virtual textures give you great power and you can do a lot with that. So here now I have, uh, I even have grass now on my, on my rocks, which makes no sense, but whatever. I think it looks so much, so much cooler. Um, in the moment you do that, so the grass is moving a bit, um, like normal grass does. Um, I, I made it really long. So just to make, to, to, to deliver the point, um, yeah, so I, I want to show how, how, how this is done. Um, so first we have um, uh, we have a virtual, let me see where it is. We have a runtime virtual texture uh, volume we bring in, which is an actor, which is this one, the yellow one you can see here. Um, and there I add a virtual texture, which, which is this one. So here I have it, and then I can say what is the content. So for me, it's base color, normal roughness, uh, specular, um, and I can set the size. Uh, so that's that, and that is, um, and you, you you can you can you can see it uh, here in the preview. Um, it uh, covers uh, it. It shows the color of this uh, of this island. So could you, by uh, the way, yeah, could you give us a brief explanation of what vir a virtual texture is? I'm not sure if I if I can do it really precisely and right. So what it basically does in this way, it's capturing um, it's capturing the um, uh, the 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 colors of uh, of the scene here. So it's like a two D um, capture uh, cam, right? Orthographic maybe would be another way. I think it's it's orthographic. I'm I'm really. I'm really not sure, so I, I I shouldn't say something completely wrong here. A live stream on virtual texturing that I can go ahead and. Um, oh, and you have in chat here. Yes, we did, and then. Okay. Um, other people use it for like you you could put your footprints in it, and then you can use it for displacement for snow or something like that. That's also an, a, another use case. So I'm more on the use case side. Um, I'm better with that than explaining what it does uh, oh you have the link there that's that's cool um yeah so it's it's writing the color of the uh in it and then if i take a look on my foliage uh here what it basically does there's this handy note runtime virtual texture sample and that is linked to the virtual texture um and i just take the base color in that's that's all so it's it's really vertex color simple grass that's all what you what you might know from uh, from normal grass setups um and that gives me at the end uh, this result and again i i don't want to it's not about showing this example it's, i i hope that it sparks some inspiration for people saying oh this, this is the kind of technology piece i can use for my project so yeah that's uh, how uh, how I use this here, and I'm I'm, I just started tinkering with the water, um, but it's really cool. So underwater. But there is another really great. I actually used the stream from Short and you, uh, to get this running here. Um, yeah, it was so quite impressive. My colleague Short made a really good uh, feature video about the water, and there's a really good stream about it. Yeah, I was uh, pretty impressed. I, I saw yesterday that you actually had the old water, and then you're just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new water." And uh, yeah, I did this really this morning. Yeah. So it is. <laughs> yeah, I always it gave me a little bit. This project is also a bit old. It was on four point twenty four uh, when I did this, so I had to move it over anyhow. And then I actually this morning decided, ah, come on, I get rid of the old um, uh, sky and atmosphere thing. I do the new one. And then I said, okay, let's try, let's try the water. And it was not too complicated to get it working. So um, uh, short showed a little bit of hack how it works with existing, um, uh, with existing landscape, because right now the water is relying on, um, uh, on, on the landscape and you, it is generating uh, it is generating uh, landscape, um, so it doesn't get in my way because here is here is the little island the water brings with it, and here is my island, and it works beautiful together. I'm just using this kind of uh, 
this is my this is just the way how how I make it work together because if I would move it here it would destroy my island but for for me this works this this works very well so and it's a little bit less duct taped um uh, but still I'm I'm looking forward I I, I talked a little bit with um with the guys working on the water and they are about to decouple that and then, and then it will be even easier but it 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 was easier than I expected. So um, even the far side, so I now have something I didn't had before, uh, which is a pretty far away water. Uh, so to have the, this, this close detailed water and have still water in the back and having nice sky and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's something, we, we talked about that yesterday, uh, Victor. Um, that was the moment I, I figured I, I want to show that. I figured, Let's make a new level. Let's make a completely empty oh, level. Right. Yes, yes. So this is pretty cool. So completely empty level. So normally what I used to do is, okay, let's put a directional light. Let's do a sky cube. Let's do this and that. And then yesterday, and I really, um, I really would like to make a Twitter post about that. Here is this environmental light mixer. And I think it was in the change list. I, I saw it on the list. But I didn't realize how cool this is. So I press here. Okay, so that comes up. Let's do minimal. That's okay. And then let's do like, okay, skylight, atmosphere, light, atmosphere. Yeah, create also voluminetric cloud. Let's change the intensity of the light here. Um, so we are done. <laughs> this is... <laughs> so, okay, what's missing? Maybe a post-process. Uh, let's do an unbound process. Uh, uh, so let's do let's add that as well. Uh, what I used to do is exponential. I I I I like to have control over this. So let's set this to some values, and then maybe also let's add a um, uh, exponential fork. So yeah, nice. I'm done. <laughs> so so <laughs> I didn't know that this exists, and I uh, this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I had never seen that, and you're just like Victor, Victor, Victor. Yeah, and it, it goes further. I'm I'm still investigating, but what's really cool is uh, what I also like is you have one panel here, yeah. which gives you all the things on one side, so I don't switch between all those different uh, actors now. And I'm on minimal, but you can go to normal and advanced. So then you have access to like everything um, in one panel. So I could put it on my second monitor now, and then begin to tweak my scene. Um, I, I really like this. And I think not many people know it exists. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, this it's a is good magic. Job. Cool. We cool, uh, cool, cool. did prep another project as well, right? Yes, that's the last one. And that's a special one where we need to chat. We need help from chat for that one. So we are going to request your participation. So now, Chet, now is your time. So what I'm about to show Oh, and is... we should probably clarify for the viewers on YouTube that uh, participation will only uh, work if you are watching the stream on Twitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. So join us, you can go to twitch.tv slash Unreal Engine, and, uh, and yeah, that's all I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, so what you see now is something uh, stitched together from a lot of assets. Um, so just to clarify, I use uh, different animal packs. I use uh, a, a pack for a nice forest scene, and I use a Twitch chat integration. Uh, so we will together go, go to a little forest here. So this is our little scene. We will, we will meet each other here in a second. So when you begin to type something, it will spawn an animal for you. Okay, there are... A lot of different animals, and I know some people of from my community are here, so they know the commands. Um, I will just fire it up, and then then we see how it goes. So let's make this big. Uh, I change my character. I like this one. So right now he he is a board. So this is an advertisement for our our stream here. So I walk around here. And okay, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't start. Let's let's start again. So here you go. So um, 
what's happening right now is if you write something, it's spawning a random animal for you. You can change the animal. Um, there are a lot, like there are cows, there's fox. I think I implemented by now 30 different animals. Um, I don't have any uh, moderator tools <laughs> in this for that reason is you do not see the text you are writing because Victor was a chicken and really afraid that you're that someone might come in the chat and write ugly stuff and we cannot moderate it. Um, it Epic Games, the corporation, being live on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's completely fine. So what 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 I did is I there is random sentences that you will speak. You can go. Uh, you are all sticking that together. You should go to different places. So for example, you can go to a fireplace. So it's it's fireplace. Um, it, all the commands are with um, exclamation mark. So exclamation mark fireplace and. And you go to, I, I, by the way, I have no, what I also didn't do is any um, optimization. So if we spawn out 1,000 animals, maybe the engine will not like that because this is, this is really 30 different skeletal animals with all own animations, with all own skeletons, with own, they have all um, uh, uh, own animation blueprints, etc. Um, so you can go to Fireplace, you can go to the board. So exclamation mark board brings you to the board and then we can take a look there. There's also a stage. So you can do exclamation mark stage, then you go to a stage and there's a barrel. So exclamation mark barrel and, and and the animals will go to a barrel. And then I have a little logic in it where the camera is, um, uh, where the camera is, yeah, that's what's happening. So the camera is going to positions where a lot of people gather. Um, yeah, and then, uh, and then you can talk to each other. What you also can do is uh, you can cheer. So if you do exclamation mark cheer, uh, your character will, will cheer. You can look into the camera when you, when you do exclamation mark camera, uh, your character will turn towards the camera. If you don't want to look to the camera, you can say not ca uh, exclamation mark, not camera, and you will look away from the camera. Is it yeah, ca what camera? Cam, I, it's, I think it's cam. Sorry, it's cam. It's not cam. Yeah, yeah. the um, I, I don't have a full list of. So this is pretty active chat. <laughs> yes, uh, let everyone know that I will un be unable to take your questions right now. <laughs> yeah, please, please now put some <laughs> questions in between. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so here's someone giving a speech. Nice. It's a uh, Will Willman. Wilman 77? Yeah, Wilman 77 is giving a speech as a little rat. Yeah, I took random. There are really random things you're saying. So the commands are not displayed, but if you write anything in chat. <laughs> oh, and I, I forgot to check the tick box for it. Also, tick when not on screen. So all the um, speech bubbles are there. It seems like it's running okay, though. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. So I can also make you, I, I have a little bit of authority of this. So we can do things like, I can make you all cheer. Like, yeah, look, like everybody's, how happy are you that Victor is on the stream? Yeah. Woo -woo. Every week. <laughs> are you <laughs> looking forward for Unreal Engine 5? Yeah, look at yeah. how happy they are. So um, I can also make them run around. <laughs> so there are some that got stuck maybe now. But one of the features I like most is I can change your appearance. So let's make you all like, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> slice them. <laughs> yeah, I can't slice them. So yeah, I'm a little old. Wow, it's pretty full here. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a silly thing. But I, I like it because this is, this is showing actually the potential of this engine. So this is something I did on the side. On, on stream, it is it is something that started as a platformer. So I wanted to make a third person platformer, and then I found this nice plugin for Twitch integration, and I thought, hmm, let's test something. Yeah, and then it got high. I, I, I found this nice asset packs. I love them. These animals are all gorgeous. Um, yeah, yeah the animations are great too. Yeah, yeah. He, he, it's it's. Um, I think he's from. Uruguay, the guy who made that. Um, it's uh, he has different animal packs. I think each has five animals or something like that, 
and each has own animations. It's it's really. I like the pig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can the pigs cheer? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> or like, okay, so, they are also they are so different in sizes. Uh, it's really nice. It's a nightmare behind the scenes. It's really duct taped because I have to handle like 30 different animation blueprints. So I cannot retarget. It's not possible. They have all own uh, uh, own skeletons, own animations, own everything. So it's uh, actually a question from Elfidio. They were wondering how you could deal with different skeletons um, but having one anim excuse me one animation blueprint with the logic no i don't have one animation blueprint each has one so in the moment i i have one character blueprint and in the moment uh, someone is entering a name like uh, uh, um, um, animal like um, exclamation mark fox or something i exchanging the the mesh the animation blueprint um so i have a data table for all the uh, for all the animals, um, and I'm mapping them. So if someone is picking one, then the table is looking, okay, this is a mesh belonging to it, this is animation blueprint belonging to it, et cetera, et cetera. And then each character has an own table for like the animations, like cheer. Um, so if, if someone is writing cheer, I'm checking, okay, it's this animal, so I'm looking into that table, and I pick this animation for him. It's a nightmare. It's nothing you, you would, uh, sane people would do. Uh, you you only have to write in the in in the chat. Um, so normally in my in my stream, people writing stuff and s small stories evolve around that. So people go to a fireside and then a bull is saying, "Hey, tiger, what did you have for food?" And people begin to talk about <laughs> stuff. This is kind of fun. Um, so little stories emerge uh, from from this, which I really like. <laughs> I mean, now they say random stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So definitely, I'm, I'm wondering. If <laughs> okay, El Fidio is really he doesn't want to look at it. He is turning around. That's what I meant. It's 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 so it's 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 kind of emerging, kind of fun. This is a cool example, right? I know in some other games, um, you have the opportunity to sort of spawn enemies for the players. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can implement um, sort of chat interaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Here. that's uh, that's it. Social, I guess. That's cool. I I'm glad you uh, you suggested that we, we show this project off. <laughs> We're not going to dive into how it's all put together. That's there's a little bit too much. Um, yeah, it is, and there's a lot of. Uh, I admit, I have some spaghetti areas here. I try to have it clean, but it it was also something that was growing. It was more like. Oh, can we do a stage? Oh, let's do a stage. So I can wait a second. I I, I can show some things. Like I have a point of interest, um, a, a bl blueprint, and then I inner it. Uh, I inner it from that, um, and that always has like this as the positions. So at the beginning, I just positions them randomly. Now I have this one. So when you say fireplace, he's looking for a random fireplace and then he's looking for a free position and then someone is going there. And so after we made that, I figured out, okay, why not a stage? So he is someone is randomly going to this position and having to give a speech and all the others are standing around. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's one part. And if I uh, what I currently can't do easily because it's taking the camera away is I, I can I can walk around. I'm a normal third person character here, so I can um, I can walk around. So the camera system right now is taking control. <laughs> I normally I don't have so many people here. So yeah, yeah, come on. This is don't what stand here. Like, huh? This is what a stress test looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I'm 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 so I'm 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 super happy. It is. Um, is working so well, even with so many. Mm -hmm. I have no limitations. So if if now one thousand people would join, then it would try to spawn one thousand characters. Yeah, let's but take that that's as nice. <laughs> so let's see, Cody. What do you have to say? Give your speech, please. We are waiting. <laughs> 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 <Thanks>. <laughs> A little shy, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
Can we all go to the stage? Nah, this is limited. Oh, now I'm scared. Yeah, and, and for example, after 30 seconds or 60 seconds, if nobody is right, if you are not writing, um, um, the, uh, uh, the character goes to sleep and, and the name disappears. But the character doesn't disappear. It's a bit hard to see where you are because if you would see your text, then you ask where you are and then you can see where you are. It's a little bit um, more complicated with so many people. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Oh yeah, there's a follow option, so you can follow people. So can you, when you follow me, um, we can walk a little bit around and see other Ooh. parts of the. Yeah, exclamation point follow space Andy Dev. I think yes. I think yes. So we can we can all walk together through the forest. If Yeah, I think some people got stuck here now. Yeah. With exclamation mark reset, you can set reset your character. Uh, but it might not it might not help. I think they are blocking each other right now. I think I'm the only one who's not blocking. Um Yeah, it's 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 still early. I I I started this just 2 or 3 weeks ago. It's 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 a fun it's a fun thing, especially when you can't meet people in person. I feel this is kind of a <laughs> it feels a bit like you're meeting someone at the campfire and then you're talking about stuff. You can also roll, by the way. There's exclamation mark roll, and your character is rolling forward with um um with um uh so, some of them. I think the pick does not. Oh, he did. Some of the animations have root uh, animation, and you can roll forward. Don't oh. roll into the fire. Oh no, the fox is now burning. Yeah. Oh. We thought that's a nice ending for the stream. I mean, if you have any more questions, please please feel free. Let Victor me is easily seeing them in chat now. Let me go through and see if we received any that we can tackle. Um, someone's asking what hardware you're running this on. Uh, I have an E9 and a 280 Ti. And uh, I think 32 gigabyte of RAM. No, I don't I don't I don't release this project. Um I I don't feel comfortable with releasing it because the problem is if I would I have a lot of streamers who already ask if I can give this to them. <laughs> and and I don't because you have to have quite some knowledge about the engine there's some stuff you have to fig configure and stuff and when it goes wrong then it's hard to find out and my code is not the best and so this is right now my my, my little private thing I, I don't i don't feel comfortable with this dn2 was asking uh, what's the name of the twitch plugin uh let me see before i say something wrong and that's the reason why I don't release it, you see. Yes. There's definitely stuff that's broken um, and I haven't fixed yet. But maybe also because I switched channels for it. Um, uh, okay. Uh, it is called... It's a plugin. Uh, here it is, Twitch Integrator. It's it's only for chat, so it's not connecting to like cheers and subs and all that. Um, so it's only chat, uh, but it works quite well. And the setup is also pretty straightforward. I have a bot running here, and I don't show you my token, but you just register uh, it, and then you connect to it. You add some commands, and then you have... Um, um, you, it gives you some some callbacks like on chat message um, or like on command. And then this is a function you will never see. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then I process the commands, I do magic, and, and then your animal does stuff. 
every good work was commenting that you can implement this as a subsystem um, and you can build it in C++ without the plugin as well. Yes, um, yes you can. Twitch provides all the documentation uh, yeah. for the SDK. Yeah, for me, it was more like I was working on that and I stumbled over that more by accident and said, oh, let's try that. And and that did, I, I didn't have to plan to make to make this. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you, Andreas. I'm just quickly glancing through um, yeah, dude. Que questions here that we received earlier. I think we're good, though. There's been some very specific ones to control rig. Um, and I would highly suggest you go and watch some of the streams we've done with Jeremiah, Helge, um, and uh, and Gregory just a couple of weeks ago, actually, <clears throat> where we sort of go through control rig a little bit more in detail. Andreas also has a great video uh, where he's showing off how to set up the little uh, two-legged robot example that he was showing off at the beginning of the stream. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Um, I see uh, one question about how I do the look at. I, I can briefly show that. That's sure. That's simple. Um, so the lookout of the character here, which you have seen before, I think that's what you are asking. Um, so uh, what it basically does, um, the flower is telling, if, if I get close to it, um, the flower is telling the character that uh, you should look at it. So the flower is giving the look at location um, to the character. And that's something, this is all the code here, that's something I'm feeding into the animation blueprint. So when we take a look at the animation blueprint uh, of him, uh, then you find he is a look at, and as a, if he's looking at something in the look at uh, position. And in the anim graph, I have a, only this idle walk um, uh, um, state machine, and after that, I do control rig, where I have the control rig, and I give the speed, the look at uh, position, and if he's looking at something. So if we take a look at the rig that's getting this information, I have the look at uh, here. Um, so and here is the whole lo uh, logic for it. So I transfer the look at location to um, to local from world. So um, that's important, otherwise you you, you get complica uh, complications. So you need to transfer it from world. And then I have um, my body bone. Um, I do an aim math. I'm using this look at as a target and this gives me the rotation. And here I do the clamping. So I break up the rotation um, um, to clamp, to clamp in which how far he can, he can move his, uh, his head. Um, and then if he's looking at something, I have an if here, then he's either taking the, the body position, which comes from the animation, or I'm taking this, and then I'm using an accumulate lerp, which is just providing that it's it's not like flipping to it, but but um, uh, moving to it um, with a certain speed. And that's basically it. That's from the nice. control rig demo, yes. Yeah, you're actually walking through how to set up the... the yeah, like not in this detail, um, but... Yes. And go through. Um, Andreas, thank you so much for prepping the projects for us today. Showing through, sure. going over some of your prototypes and <clears throat> plans, ideas, and, and random happy accidents like the environment light mixer. Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah, I think you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's always great when you sort of discover things in the editor that you didn't know existed and they actually you know, someone thought of that, right? That like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, and then it gets implemented completely without, yeah. your, um, without knowing. It's very difficult to follow, even internally, of sort of state. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the engine is big. There are so many yeah. use cases. There is, uh, I, I would think that this environment stuff is coming from also from needs um, more from outside of games. Um, so yeah, it is. It is. It is so different. Uh, usage is so different stuff, and it's growing so greatly. Um, it is. Uh, but I, I love this. If you tinker on something and then you find something like that, I, I, I also love. I just love it. 
All right, um, time to do my outro spiel, and then we will go ahead and sign off here. Thanks everyone for watching today. Um, hope you enjoyed our this little special episode, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, leave a, leave a comment, or if you have reached out, if you want to need, if you want to know anything, we are on social okay. media. We are on, on the forum. Yeah, so. I think you can see our our uh, our Twitter handles <laughs> right up there. I it's don't a, know where it is. It's 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 above your head. Yeah, you're you're. Yeah, right there. Nice. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, uh, another good place to talk. Um, oh, there I got. I'm. I'm. I'm so. Um, it's, it's a good stream today. Th thank you again, Andreas, for coming on. Uh, coming on. I was going to say the forums as well as UnrealSackers.org are great places to discuss Unreal Engine. Um, whether you have questions or just generally want to uh, talk, discuss, and hang out um, with other people who are interested in the same. Uh, same stuff that you do. Um, if you are watching today for the first time and you're excited about getting into game development or uh, producing film, media, virtual production, uh, whatever it could be, uh, go ahead and check out UnrealEngine.com where you can download the engine for free. Um, if you already have the Epic Games Launcher installed, you can just go ahead and go to the Unreal Engine tab and download the latest version, which is 426.1, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, Point it is. Is, uh, is coming uh, within due time. Um, if you had something in particular that we talked about today that you weren't sure of when we talked about it. We are timestamping all of the VODs that go up on YouTube right now. And you can also, within usually within a week after we go offline, uh, you can find the full transcript uh, uploaded uh, to Box. There will be a link in the YouTube description. Um, and you can go ahead and control F and search for any keywords that you were curious about, uh, either knowing how they were spelled um, or what to look for. Um, as always, make sure you visit communities.unrealengine.com if you're interested in meeting people in your area. Clearly, there are no meetups happening right now during the pandemic. Uh, however, several of them have gone ahead to host virtual meetup groups. Um, and so it's a good opportunity, I would say, in case you're not like physically close to where one is hosted. I'm sure you can just go ahead and join it and uh, find some people who might be, you know, at least within a couple hours of you. Um, and go ahead and join the virtual meetups, hang out, talk Unreal Engine. That's how a lot of us originally met, actually, was through the Unreal Engine meetups. I've had worked with many people, and then years after, I, I get to work with them again or for the first time, and when we originally got to know each other uh, throughout an Unreal Engine meetup. It's a good place also to just practice your presentation skills or um, show off some projects uh, that are work in progress and get feedback on them. Um, if you want to let us know what you're working on, we're always excited about that. You can use at Unreal Engine or any of our Twitter handles to reach us there. Uh, another good place is the work in progress and release sections of the Unreal Engine forums. That is forums.unrealengine.com. And if you stream on Twitch, we do have an Unreal Engine, uh, not category, but tag. You can go ahead and add that. And if you're curious or looking for more people who are streaming Unreal Engine content, you can go ahead and uh, search for game development and Unreal Engine are the two tags that I usually use. Um, let's see if we can go ahead and raid someone today after the stream. I think Sky is on top of that. So always make sure you follow us on social media. Hit the notification bell on YouTube if you want to see our new uploads. We have some really cool stuff coming from the evangelists in the coming months. Uh, and Andreas, are you going to be on the stream next week as well? I think you are. I, I am? I think you are. I think you've been oh, nice. <laughs> to do that. Next week, we're going to cover... Uh, so a portion of the evangelism team is going to come on the stream to talk a little bit about... Uh, launching a game, um, we will hear some stories from some of the evangelists who have shipped their own independent projects in the past, uh, what they learned, things to think about, um, and how, you, how we would tie that into Unreal Engine. So I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about some of the legalese details about shipping with Unreal Engine. There isn't much to it, but there are a couple of important things to know about. Um, and so we'll be covering that on the stream next week, which is awesome. Um, once again, Andreas, thank you so much for coming on. Um, hopefully we get to do this Again, some point, sometime, which I realize is next week, a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do. <laughs> um, and thanks to all of you out there for watching. Um, hope you're staying safe in these um, chaotic times um, and that you enjoy the stream. Um, but we'll see you again next time at the same, next week at the same time, same day. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's wave goodbye to the camera, Andreas. Bye, everyone. I I'm waving. Bye. Mm -hmm.